All right, move it along. The block is now finish honed. Surface finish is perfect. Uh, next steps I'm gonna do are start to prep it for assembly. So because we're using a Jessel belt drive, we're not gonna use this thrust plate. So I'm gonna get rid of it and I'm gonna pull out all of these galley plugs out of the block front and rear. And then I'll come back deeper the freeze plug holes to make the freeze plugs a little easier to come in to get knocked in and then deeper the bottoms and the tops of the sleeves. After that, we'll punch cam bearings in it, give it a cool paint job, and keep moving forward. Dart ships these O-ring plugs for the oil galleys pre-installed. I always like to pull them out before we do a final wash of the block because sometimes there is some metal debris from machining trapped in the oil galleys and obviously we wanna get all of that out of here so that when we start this engine for the first time, there's not already a whole bunch of debris inside of the motor, which is obviously a no-go situation. So here's a really good example. Look at this plug. I just pulled it out. Look how much metal contaminants and debris are on it. And this is a brand new block. So if you guys are working with these dart blocks, please pull all of the plugs out of the motor before you do a final wash for assembly. Now we'll knock a burr off these freeze plug holes just to make the freeze plugs a little bit easier to install. Obviously this doesn't affect the performance of the motor at all, but definitely affects my attitude when putting it, it together. So I'm gonna deburr the bottoms and the tops of the piston sleeves. And I'm, I just like to use a small hand, a uh, little scrape burr with a bigger blade on it. And it's, I like, the, I knock the end off of it and it allows you to come in from the bore and kind of just scrape it and take the edge off the bore right there. So I just run it back and forth a little bit, knock off the burr left over from honing that way whenever the piston comes down on the bottom of its stroke, it doesn't catch that burr and scratch up its skirt. So, just gonna take my time, go nice and slow, and get all these little burrs knocked off. And when you're done, you should be able to kind of roll your finger over that edge and it should feel nice and smooth. Whereas on the other cylinder that I haven't touched, it, you can feel it kind of scratchy and, and almost like it will cut you if you're not careful. So that's it. We're gonna do that to all eight holes on the bottom. And then we'll go back into the machine shop room to do the tops. Whenever you get these blocks from Dart, they already have some stroker notches cut in them uh, for the connecting rod to swing around with a big stroke crankshaft, but they leave a really sharp point. So I'm just gonna come back with a hand grinder and knock those off real quick. Okay, everything on the bottoms now is nicely deburred. That sharp edge is gone. Everything feels really nice and smooth. Now let's roll it over and we're gonna knock off the top burr on the block now. To do this step, I have a big drill here with a cone head with a sanding wheel on the bottom. And so all we do is we stick it into the block and just give it a couple seconds on the gun. Just like that.
and that's going to knock off that top burr so that when we install our piston rings, they can glide right past it and not get scratched up. Just like that. Super simple. I'm gonna go throw this block into our hot tank pressure washer, let it have a nice 10 minute bath, and when I bring it out, it will be done and ready for us to give it a nice paint job and knock some cam bearings into it. Now that the block has been washed and put back on the stand, it's time to paint it. So I'm gonna knock off the main caps and then tape everything off so we can put a nice coat of paint on this motor. Okay, it is finally time to paint this engine block. This is usually some of the stuff that we cut out of a build series because it is not very exciting, just a bunch of tape and painting, but I said I was gonna show everything. You guys have asked me to show you everything, so here we are. Okay, next step, we're gonna pop our freeze plugs in. I like to use this uh, as a sealant to go around the plug. I just put a little bit of it in, a, in the lid of the container. Take a Q-tip, get a little bit on your Q-tip, and then I just paint it into the freeze plug bore and the engine block. 
And then I just use a impact socket that fits the freeze plug really well to hammer it in. And I always like to line up the, there's always some little numbering and stamping inside the plug. I always like to line that up so that it's facing, you know, kind of the correct orientation in the block instead of being, you know, all crooked or sideways or going off random directions. And I just go to where it's perfectly flush with the block. Just like that. And then I'll just come back with some compressed air and blow off all the little brass shavings. The camshaft bearings that I'm gonna use are still a standard Babbitt bearing. I'm not going to a full roller because I do wanna street drive this engine when I'm not racing. Um, but they do have a the groove that is cut 360 degrees all the way around the bearing with feed holes drilled into that groove. So oil will come from the block, hit that groove, go around the full bearing, and then come into the camshaft from those three holes. On this front cam bearing, it's really important that the bearing is behind the flange surface of the block. But all the cam bearings are in, the freeze plugs are on. This block is prepped and in the next video we are going to start checking main bearing clearance, setting rod bearing clearance, gapping our piston rings, and start putting this bad dude together. Next, I'm going to install the oil galley plugs. And because this is an aftermarket dart block, they have this nice kind of straight cut with an O-ring uh, type of plug. And so I just put a little bit of lubricant on the threads and the O-ring, and then they will be installed into the block. All right, the last part I have to install in this block is the oil feed fitting that is going to screw into the block back here. So again, I'm gonna put a little bit of thread lubricant on there and we'll get this installed. I lied, there's actually one more little oil plug right above that fitting in the block. This block is primarily used in engines that are solid, that have solid lifters. And a solid roller lifter requires, you know, maybe a 10th or a 20th, 10% uh, or 20% of the oil flow that a hydraulic lifter needs. And so Dart has these built-in plug provisions where you can actually install oil flow limiters in the block to limit how much oil is delivered to the lifters. However, I am running a Jessel solid roller lifter and Jessel builds in their oil flow restrictors into the lifter so that the lifter gets exactly how much oil it requires. So I'm not gonna run any restrictors in the block because the restrictors are built into the lifters so we can plug these galleys off.
Okay, that wraps up our block prep and machining video. It has been fully honed to size. It's got a nice paint job in it. Cam bearings are installed. The freeze plugs are installed. All the oil galley plugs are installed. In the next video, I'm gonna show you guys how we check bearing clearance and set our ring gap, and then we can start prepping this engine block for the short block assembly. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.